So Sublender has been out for a while now, and there's a lot of credit folks who are recommending that you sign up for this, that way you can improve your credit. So I decided in this video that I'm gonna give you my recommendations and let you know whether this is for you or not. That way you know exactly whether this is something that you should uh, add to your credit or maybe you should avoid it at all cost. What's up y'all, my name is Tommy Bobo, your credit and personal finance coach. This is your first time on my channel, I'd just like to say welcome. Typically on this channel, I'm gonna be talking about things related to credit and personal finance. So if you're interested in improving your credit and achieving financial freedom, then be sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now let's go ahead and jump into whether Self Lender is for you. So for those of you guys who have used Self Lender but you're not sure exactly how it works, I thought I'd at least start by talking about the breakdown of how it works and so you have an idea of how you go about using it and what the benefits are of it. Now, an easy way to understand Self Lender is it's basically like you're giving yourself a loan. Okay, the way it works is you're pretty much depositing a monthly amount, let's say for example, $25 or $50 into an account every single month and they self lender, the actual company is reporting that to the credit bureaus, almost like you are paying off a loan. But in actuality, what you're doing is you're just depositing this money into account and you, it's basically accruing and saving up, up, up all the way until a certain period of 12 to 24 months where they will send that money back to you. So it's basically like an installment loan. Like you, if you were to go out to a bank and get a personal loan, it has that same effect on your credit. But the only difference is you're basically saving that money and then you're getting a lump sum at the end. Now, the benefit of this is it impacts the biggest category on your credit score. So for those of you guys who don't know, the 35% of your credit score is your payment history. OK, and basically the what this payment history is, is banks are just going to look at how often you're making payments on time, right? Month to month. So, for example, if you miss a payment on a credit card, right, that will be a negative. It'll have a negative effect on your payment history category of your credit score. OK, and what the benefit of it is by you using something like a self lender uh, uh, installment loan is it's actually adding more positive payment history. So if you ever have missed a uh, maybe you missed a payment or maybe you were like 60 days late, 90 days late on an account now because of self lender, you are able to add more positive history to basically drown out that negative history. Right. The idea is you, if you can't remove the 30 day late or the 60 day late, then you can pile on a bunch of positive credit history on top of it. And so it the negative uh, credit history has a lot less of an impact on your credit score. Now, what I decided to do is to give you an example of how an account with them would work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into their lowest tiered account. OK, so you're able to deposit uh, as low, as little as $25, but it can go up to, I think a hundred dollars, if not more. Okay. But at least as starting at the $25 point, this is how it would, an account with them would work. So first off, you have to deposit again, the $25 every month, but at the beginning, you're going to pay a, an admin fee. Uh, it's a non-refundable administration fee of $9. Uh, after that, then you're going to pay $25 per month for 24 months. After the 24 months, the idea is you will have established credit credit history, right? You're going to have those 24 months of positive payment history and you get back $520 at the end of that, that time period. So one thing I do want to note on that is you will be losing a portion of the money that you put in. OK, if you're putting a twenty five dollars every single month for 24 months, you and you should technically have six hundred dollars at the end of it. But they're taking an eighty dollar fee from letting you to be able to uh, do this whole process. So it actually comes out to you losing a total of about 14.4%, okay? Out of all the money that you've uh, pretty much uh, given to them in total, you're gonna lose about 14% of that money. That's the way I like to look at it. Now, the benefit to a self lender account is you're actually gonna not have to worry about any type of hard pulls. They don't do any hard pulls, no hard inquiries are gonna show up on any of the credit bureaus. And another benefit is that they're actually gonna be reporting to all three credit bureaus. So once you actually decide to open an account with them and you're making the payments, they are gonna be reporting those payments to all three of the credit bureaus. So that's gonna be a great benefit for you. Now again, this is gonna help you, especially if you're having issues with the payment history portion of your credit score. So if you've missed any payments, if you have collections accounts, things like that, then you're probably in a situation where you've had you know, 30 day late, 60 day late, 90 day late, so on and so forth. This is gonna help you by giving you some positive payment history to kind of wash away the negative 
of payment history. So that's gonna be a plus. Also, I like to look at it as it's a way for you to be able to save money because at the end of the day, when you're making those deposits after 12 months or 24 months, then you're gonna actually get your money back that you've been depositing all along. And it's almost like you now have an emergency fund, okay? This is something that's been big. If you guys watch my uh, stock trading video about how to start investing in the stock market, one thing I touched on was that you need to have an emergency fund before you get started, right? And the reason being is you wanna have money set aside that can help you take care of any type of expenses that might come up. You know, we all have unexpected expenses, right? You know, your car might break down sometimes. Maybe uh, if you own a house, you have issues where things are breaking down in your house, things like that. Maybe you have uh, unexpected insurance or uh, health bills that come up, you know, little things like that. So you always wanna have some sort of an emergency fund just to kind of give you a little buffer um, so you don't feel like you know, you're in a situation where you, as soon as you get your paycheck, you're spending all the money because of all these other expenses that you're incurring. So that's probably, for me, probably the biggest benefit was uh, not only does it help your credit, but it actually helps you build up that emergency fund. And uh, for those of you guys who don't have any types of bank accounts, I even shot another video where I was talking about the best bank accounts uh, that give you the highest interest rate, which is great for where you can store your uh, emergency fund, the money that you have for that emergency fund. So I'll link to that video as well as my stock trading video down below as well so you can check that out. Uh, but honestly guys, I think those are gonna be the biggest benefits. Now let's go ahead and jump into what are some of the negatives that come with this. Now honestly, the biggest negative for me was some, uh, an effect that I actually mentioned a little earlier, right? And that has to do with the amount that you're paying in fees. So, you know, not only were you paying that $9 administration fee in the example I gave you, you also were paying $80. Um, basically, you were losing $80 off of the amounts that you were depositing uh, every single month, okay? And that came out to you losing about a little more than 14% of all the money that you contributed. To me, personally, I think that's a large amount. I really think that if you can, it would make more sense for you to get a secured card because with a secured card, uh, there's a lot of no fee secured cards. So you're really only putting in a deposit and you can eventually get that deposit back once you decide to close the card or if you decide to, or you end up getting upgraded to another card, right? Some of these, there's uh, special cards out there that have uh, what's called like graduation timelines. So maybe you have a secured card with the bank and then after six months, a year, they upgrade you to their unsecured card and they just send you back your deposit, right? That would probably be the best case scenario. Um, and I actually shot a video detailing some of my uh, favorite, I think it was my top five secured cards that have no fees. So I'll link to that down below so you can check out. I think that's probably gonna be your first stop. You wanna try to get a secured card that doesn't have any fees or very little at the worst, find one that has very little fees, uh, but there is no fee cards out there. And I think once you've exhausted that, then it might make sense for you to turn back around and get this as well. And so, yeah, that's really who I think it's best for. It's gonna be someone who maybe they have store cards or secured cards already, and maybe they've missed a few payments on some of those cards, and they're looking to add more positive payment history to get rid of those. Then it might be make sense. It might be a situation where you end up getting the self-lender account added as well. And th that kind of combination can do wonders for you. I mean, if you're looking for, there's a portion of your credit, the credit mix category, I think that that could be a benefit as well is, um, you know, if you are trying to get a few points on the credit mix section, just by you adding this installment loan, if you don't have any type of like an auto loan or a home loan, then that can help boost your credit score a little bit more as well. But I would say just because, just by looking at the fees and everything and uh, it does, the fact that this draws on for about 12 to 24 months, I just think that you have to be a specific type of person for this to be beneficial for you. So honestly, again, just to kind of recap, try to get a credit or secured card or a store card, and I'll link to videos down below talking more about these as well, but you wanna try to get a store card or credit card, and then after that, you can move over to getting a self-lender account. But other than that, there's, that's pretty much uh, what I think in my opinion is majority of people won't need the self-lender card. It's really just for like a small subset of people, like a specific type of person. And yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it. You know, So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this, be sure that you hit the like button down below so we can get this video out to more people. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so that 
uh, you don't miss any of my future videos that I'll be releasing. And lastly, make sure you check out the videos I'm putting down in the description below. That way you can make sure that you are able to fix any type of issues you have on your credit, whether it's a collections account, medical collections, repos, bankruptcies, things like that. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll see you at the next one.